you are amongst the nerdiest of nerdy turtle and tortoise people. It's Maximus a la Kitty Caddis. The cool thing about animals is they teach us something new all the time. But let's go inside here and talk about the Aldebaran. Hello. Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here wishing you all a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody's with family or you've spent a good portion of the day with family and now maybe you're off in the corner trying to avoid that crazy uncle of yours who just wants to talk politics and uh, maybe you're just catching up on some Cam Cannon videos, which is great. Thank you to our amazing supporters who help to make this show possible every week. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennan. This week's special shout out goes to Oliver Cooper. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. Uh, well, it's time to put the animals away, so I'm going to be doing that. But it's also Thursday. And whether it's a holiday or not, it is time for a question from of course, you, my friends out there uh, that support us on Patreon. So we like to do an Ask Cam Cannon question. I'm just checking everybody here. I don't want them to see me because when they see me, they start coming out of their house. So uh, we want to keep all these tortoises inside because it's going to be chilly here this afternoon. But we got a couple questions. So while I'm walking around checking on the critters, you guys are going to get some questions answered. First one is from Rainy Parker. And Rainy is a supporter and a good pal who always shows up on our live uh, on Patreon. And Rainy was asking this. Uh, Rainy says, I realize being at the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group uh, Society's meeting for the first time, there's a lot I don't know. Do you have any tips, tricks, or suggestions on learning and remembering things like genealogy, taxonomy, and scientific names? All right, Rainy, very good question. Um, yeah, you know, when you go to one of these events, you are amongst the nerdiest of nerdy turtle and tortoise people. Here are some radiated tortoise. And uh, when we are all together, us turtle and tortoise nerds, uh, many times people like to use the scientific names. And then they talk about subspecies and they get really, really, into where these animals are from, like localities. And uh, it's just like being at a Star Trek convention, except it's turtles and tortoises. They know everything about every little aspect of the animal's biology and locality and so on. Uh, sometimes that can be intimidating when you're around people like that. And to be perfectly honest, there are some people uh, that use it as a way to talk down to noobs or people that don't know as much. Um, I have never been like that and I never liked hanging out with people like that. So you got to first off, make sure you're finding uh, the right people. And the cool thing about the TTPG is it's made up of people like you and I. People that are just in love with these animals and want to do the best. So that could be scientists, there are zoo professionals involved, but mostly they're private keepers. So the good thing about that particular thing is that those people are accessible. So to answer your question, uh, it's very simple. Read, 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 and read, and continue to go to those meetings and get involved in that way. So here we are looking at, uh, I think it's now called Astrocelles radiata. Uh, they change names all the time. And taxonomy is an interesting thing. And this is Felis uh, domesticanus, or the domestic cat. I believe that's what it is. I don't even know the, the uh, Latin on the kitty cat. It's Maximus a la kitty catus. Uh, but yeah, so what happens is scientists put Latin names onto these animals so that no matter where you are in the world, when you say Astrocelles radiata, everyone, no matter what language they're in, knows you're talking about the radiated tortoise. Uh, the only way to really memorize these things is to read about them. Uh, there are plenty of fantastic books out there uh, about turtles and tortoises. The more you get, the more you'll absorb. Uh, and I find that when you have an interest in something, it's always easier to really retain the information. Uh, books are great because they become references. For example, we're looking at Cora ambienensis. This is the Malaysian box turtle. Okay, but it's in the Gina Cora and ambienensis is the species, but there are different localities. And sometimes these guys get to places where I don't even know what they're talking about when they talk about the Sulawesi variety. There are also variety from other places in Indonesia and it gets really, really technical. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't know everything and that's kind of the fun. So Rainy, don't be discouraged that you don't know anything. Be excited because whenever we don't know something, you know, it's just an opportunity for you to learn. 
And I think that's the really cool thing about animals is that they're always teaching us something new. Uh, I'm really happy Max is following me. He normally, he's uh, been so old and lazy that he doesn't really follow me around much anymore. Anyway, I'm happy about that. But um, the cool thing about animals is they teach us something new all the time. There's always something new to learn. I'm always looking to see what's going on. Look, at there's a Reeves turtle, okay? And I believe it's Chinemi's Reeves eye as it goes into the deep part of the pond here. But um, yeah, so I only know, basically, I, I, I do happen to know a lot of Latin names on account. I have a really cool book called Turtles of the World by Ernst and Barber. It's an older book, uh, but it was a really great encyclopedia of most of the known species of turtles and tortoises. So look for that book, Turtles of the World by Ernst and Barber. Uh, definitely check that out. That was a great reference for me. And it has a little description of their natural history, how to identify them, uh, the Latin names, uh, and then any subspecies the animals might have. So Rainy, it's very cool. Keep going. Go to more of these meets. Chat with more people. Watch videos like mine where we're learning. I always try and throw out the Latin names on these animals so that you guys can kind of equate that to the common name. So it's a really cool thing, taxonomy. Uh, the lineage system, I believe, of taxonomy after the, I believe it was a Swedish, Swedish scientist who uh, started modern taxonomy. I don't know, I could be wrong. Check me out, uh, keep me honest. In the meantime, uh, what I'm doing is just checking out these critters. Let's see how the glops are doing. And the Aldabra, okay, everyone looks like they're in there. One, two, three, three animals. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna shut this, and when I'm done with the video, I'll just go ahead and, uh, well, I'll uh, screw that in. But uh, we got time for another question, people, and I like this stuff. Ah, this was a cool question. Uh, since we were just with the Aldabra tortoise, uh, I saw, let's go back over there. I saw an article about the Aldabra tortoise and that they're able to swim from island to island like a Komodo dragon. Just curious, about if it's true, and if and if it's true, would you consider swimming with your Aldabra tortoise, Benjamin Jane? Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do a swing with my Aldabra tortoise. Um, that's not something I wanna do. But let's go inside here and talk about the Aldabra tortoise. Oh, hello, this is a Galapagos tortoise, and it's okay, we can talk about them as well, because these species of tortoise, there's my Aldabra nostradamus, these species of turtles and tortoise, or these two tortoise species here, are actually tortoises that will, in fact, raft. Uh, the reality is, folks, is that the Galapagos tortoises and the Aldabra tortoises, it's theorized that they got to their respective islands because they were washed out from the mainland. And they wound up being able to survive long periods, as we know, without food or drinking water. And this has helped them to colonize some faraway places like the Galapagos and the Seychelles or Aldabra Atoll in the Indian Ocean. Uh, there's Nostradamus playing shy. That's my Aldabra. So basically, what happens is, to this day, animals will sometimes get washed out to sea from storms and they'll go ahead and raft to different islands. Now, they aren't necessarily actively swimming, although they will move their feet uh, and try desperately to guide themselves uh, in a direction, but usually they are not such strong swimmers, and what happens is they're at the mercy of the currents. And if the islands aren't close enough together, there's Nostradamus, if the islands aren't close enough together, they may actually go for many periods, many, many months at sea. And I don't know if it's the same article you read, but there is a story of a tortoise that was found way out at sea by a ship, and the tortoise was alive and had barnacles all over it. So that meant it was in the water for quite some time, if barnacles actually grew. So... These tortoises, most likely, way back in their history, before they were Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises, they probably wound up getting washed out to sea by some kind of big storm, and they rafted or floated all the way to their respective islands. So I don't think they want to swim on purpose, but if they had to, if the food stores were used up on an island, maybe they'd raft to another one uh, and get to perhaps... Oh, some better eating. I'm going to get some eating going on here because 
Darwin looks like she wants to take a bite of my pants. That is not something you can bite. Please don't bite me. I'm in a corner. Oh, my God. I can't get out of here. Anyway, uh, really good questions today. Really hoping everybody had a fantastic holiday. And uh, we will be back, of course, next Thursday. Don't forget to check us out on Sunday as well for more videos here from the camp and elsewhere. And I hope everybody is surviving Thanksgiving. And don't forget, look out for that crazy uncle of yours. He doesn't know what he means. He's just, well, I don't know. Never talk politics at the dinner table. All right, everybody, this is Cannon. I'm uh, kind of trapped right now. And uh, what a nice place to be trapped, isn't that true? You gonna bite me? She's a little scared still. I guess it's the beard. Doesn't like the way it feels when I kiss her. All right, everyone, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to get your question and answered here, right here on the channel, check us out on Patreon. All right, everyone, so long.